Welcome! This is a third section of our Hadoopable course and in this section we will start doing practical use cases using technologies that we learned in the previous section. So in this first one from that series of 10 sections we'll be looking at the financial and trade and time series applications. So we will be processing payment data and implementing real-time logic on stream of events and we'll be saving data to HBase. This is a first video and in this video we'll be processing payment data from an event stream. So we will be creating this stream provider that is providing stream of payments to our application. So we have a streaming project and we will start from implement the D stream provider. This is a provider that will fetch data from Kafka and on Kafka there will be data about payment. So first thing we need to define a properties of Kafka that needs to be set. So first thing we need to define a bootstrap servers and we are putting it to localhost because we will start a Kafka on the localhost. Then we need to give a group ID. So let's give a group ID like payment provider or payment processor. So this will be our application ID and also key and value deserializers. So key of our message will be string and value will be also string because in Kafka, every message has key and value. Key is used to partitioning our data and value can be any data. Next, let's implement the payment provider method. So we will need to get a Spark streaming context. So this is our class and it will return a DStream provider of the payment object. Let's look at this case class. So payment case class has user ID that is from payment to that is a user to which the payment is going and amount big decimal and it has user ID so we are extending with user ID trade because it has a user ID field and we are able then to do some more generic code. Next we are using Kafka utils that is from Kafka clients dependency. Let's look at this dependency. So we are using a Kafka clients library that gives us a useful utils to create utilities. So we are creating a direct stream of string string type because keys is a string and also value is a string. We are using string decoder and string decoder key value. Then we are passing a Spark streaming context and properties of our Kafka. Next, we need to pass a proper topic. So it will be payment topic. So we are passing it and it will return a tuple of string to string, but we need to return a payment so we need to deserialize it to payment. We are using an object app mapper because a value of our object is JSON. So we are taking a value and we are deserializing it to the payment type. And this way we will return this stream of payment. We have a payment analyzer class and we'll be looking at that class in the next video, but it extends Spark streaming application and let's look at it. So this is a specific trade that is extending Spark application. Spark application is a trade that has a Spark app name and method with Spark context. It takes a Spark configuration and Spark context and executes some kind of function on the Spark context. So we are creating a Spark context with app name using configuration that will be passed here and we are creating new Spark context. Next, Spark streaming application will be using that Spark streaming context. So we have a function that takes configuration and returns configuration and function that is using Spark streaming context. And this will be our processing. Next, we are using with Spark context passing configuration and it will give us a Spark context. We need a Spark context to create streaming context. So we are creating new streaming context using some kind of configuration that we will pass here. We are setting a check pointing directory for failure recovery and we are executing our function, but before the actual invoking function happen, we need to start our application and we'll be using it when in our payment analyzer job.